Hey there fellow energy therapy enthusiasts, welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving into something truly special, a journey through the pages of my book that has helped so many people with their heartfelt desire to help a loved one. What if energy therapies were profoundly effective at easing the suffering and extending the life of a person or pet with cancer? And what if it was easy? That's why I wrote this book. So in this video, you will learn that there is a way to use energy therapy to activate or enhance a person or pet's innate healing ability, even for something as dire as cancer. I'm Suzanne Clegg, the proud author of There is Another Way, Energy Medicine for Pets with Cancer. It's available on Amazon and Kindle. I wrote it in 2016, and for the past five or six years, I've wanted to rewrite it but I kept putting it off. I've changed a lot. YouTube has evolved. I originally wanted to um, just make a short, quick, easy thing so that people could quickly see how easy this could be and take advantage of helping someone with cancer and that this simple technique can really make a difference. Um, but since I put it off and put it off, I decided that rather than rewriting the book, I'd do this commentary on what I already wrote. That way you can benefit from my current state of clinical experience and jump right into helping your loved one. You'll see that I've changed my mind about topics like working with chemo and radiation, the Bankston method, and so forth. So this particular video is part one of a four-part series and it sets the framework for the, the subsequent parts. So you'll want to watch to the end and please like and subscribe and hit that bell to make sure you get algorithmed in to the parts two, three, and four videos. And comment. I'm excited to read and answer your comments. I'm curious about your reactions and your outlooks on this cutting edge application of our ancient healing capacity. All right, so if you're excited to get started, like the video and let's dive in. So here we go. Acknowledgements. I would like to express my gratitude to William Bankston, who patiently and generously mentored me with, his fir with my first cancer cures. So thank you, Bill. And um, I knew it was important when we were going to, uh, when, when I was like bringing my patients and you were mentoring me, not just how to do rapid image cycling, which you can learn so quickly, but how to actually work with a naturally healing tumor. Um, all the little tweaky things I, it just like I'm a pretty good observer and you there was a lot to observe and I'm so grateful for that all right I'm also grateful for my clients and their magnificent animal companions it's been an honor to serve each and every one of you um, so this is a book about um, energy medicine for pets with cancer and I think right before I wrote this book I'd had I'd worked with some animals and their people and I didn't have the same problems that um, I had with people. Like people might get mad at you if you do something that is out of the box. And so like there's all these social, they were, and that now it's a little less, but back then it was a little, it's like the families of my patients were more of a problem than just the, you know, helping the patient because they were just so worried they were getting suckered into somebody that was dishonest or they weren't getting the care they needed. And, you know, they just didn't like none of that was happening. But but, you know, there's some pretty intense fears that keep you from being able to see what's right in front of your nose. And I do think that there's as much or more fear in the family members as the actual cancer patients. So um, I was walking in the woods one day and um, it's almost like all the animals that could ever be helped with, with what I do. It's like I felt them spiritually around me and they said, we can help you. And um, I also thought, you know, well, Bill Bankston has shown in so many studies how you know, complete cancer remissions in mice and I have this goal of having 100 cancer cures. And I thought, well, I don't care if they're animals or people. I just, I just, it's sort of like just a little bucket list of thing. And um, 
So I thought maybe I can get uh, get it to happen faster if I work through animals. Um, animals tend to um, heal faster than people, and there's all these other reasons. But anyway, I just felt like this was a way around all the 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 problems that um, that people have. That it's just like they leave you alone if you want to do energy therapy on your dog. You know, you're they go go for it. You know, and what are you doing? You're sitting there petting your dog or your cat, or you're going out and playing with your horse. Um, or your hamster, or whatever you're doing. Um, it's just like people leave you alone and you can just do it. <laughs> you can sit down and do it. And that's, I thought that was a, a critical piece for that. So thanks for those initial, my, my clients back then who helped me understand that the this animal, it was, I love animals. I, I, I'm happy just to help animals, but I also thought that helping a certain number of people help their own animals would uh, free um, this whole process up for people as well. Um, I'd like to thank Fabian Fredrickson who, for enthusiastically encouraging me to write this book. Um, thanks, thanks Fabian. Thanks to my Spirit Gate team, especially my assistant Midori Greeno, for working with me on a daily basis, enabling me to publish this book. She had done books before and she just sort of knew what to do. I gave her the words and she made it work. I'm grateful for my husband, Ted, and my daughters, Abigail and Phoebe, who supported and encouraged me, not only in the writing of this book, but in the many unconventional adventures with my career. And I truly am grateful for you three for helping me. Um, and last but not least, I am grateful for Je Georgette, my hamster, as well as Nikki and Annie, my dear dogs, who taught me how much about how animals heal. And if you want to learn about Georgette, um, I think there's a video on YouTube. Uh, you just type in Suzanne Clegg and um, hamster, and there's a s story of how she was, um, she had a great big tumor and it went away. Um, and I documented a part of it in that video. That was back in 2012, so yeah. All right, next page, contents. <laughs> the next chapter is six things I tell people when they learn their pet has cancer. Introduction. Does your pet have cancer? Are you aware of the benefits of energy medicine, but you're not sure how they may help cancer? Are you worried about how to care about your pet as they go through the process? You would like a cure, but comfort and manageability are also important. This book explains my method of teaching you how to activate your pet's innate healing ability. It's easy to learn and in certain situations, quite effective, even for beginners. All right. You may be familiar with William Bankston, PhD's research, where in 15, now it's much more than that, peer-reviewed university settings, he was able to document cancer cures in almost all of the mice that had otherwise incurable cancer. Once Bankston found he could do it, he had skeptical graduate students do his method, and their mice also cured were cured. I cannot promise you, I cannot promise that you can cure your animal, of course, but I can tell you I am fully trained by Bankston in his method that got those results. I have developed it into my own approach using video coaching so that your pet is relaxed. If you'd like to try it, I can help you do so. And that came from people bringing me their pets and putting them on my treatment table and I was trying to show them how to give their pets treatment, but the pets were just, they didn't want to be, they, they liked their own environment. It was very stressful to bring a dog or a cat into a strange place, and so they weren't relaxed. Nobody was relaxed, and we were trying to do it, and turns out that video coaching works much, much, much better. And since I'm intuitive, I can zone in on, I can tell what's happening, even if I'm not there in the room. I do like I have a preference for hands-on healing versus only distance healing. So while I'm coaching people, I am doing distance healing, but I'm training you how to do the hands-on training. So the idea is that um, I'm your coach. You give 90% of the treatments and I coach you through you know, them occasionally, once a week, whatever. You give your pet maybe, well, I don't know if I talk about this later or not, but um, carry on, all right. I won't be going into the fundamentals of energy medicine, 
I'm assuming that if you're reading this, you are already familiar with some version of it. Acupuncture, laying on of hands, Reiki, healing touch, prayer, etc., etc. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of methods of, of energy therapies. It's a cross-cultural thing. It's been around forever. You already know that your pet is not just bones and blood, but also has emotions and a soul. You already know what the physical body that the physical body can be affected by emotions and spiritual input, and you want to include this in your care for your sick animal friend. All right. From the level it doesn't hurt, it might help. Okay. This method is different from most energy healing methods. I know because I've been trained in and even taught many of them. I had to unlearn much of what I knew about sound healing, faith healing, qigong, shamanism, therapeutic touch, and acupuncture. Okay, so that's critical. I really had to unlearn a bunch of stuff. I now integrate these methods sparingly when I'm cooling down a tumor. My method overlaps with other energy medicine methods and may at first glance seem to be working the same way, but there are important differences. This book should give you enough information to know if this energy healing method is something you want to learn. It's not really going to teach you how to do it, but it, it's like a an introduction. It's a short book, right? It's not very long. Um, be prepared to receive a deeply loving paradigm shift that will not only help your beloved animal, but you as well. All you need is your hands, an open heart, and the willingness to do the exercises. Let's begin. All right, so I have just begun cycling right now. All right, I was doing a little bit before, but now I'm formally telling you that I've begun a distance healing on whoever is watching this video in the future. And you might have felt a shift if, you know, while I was reading that last little bit. Um, okay. And I can do it while I read and think and do stuff. So, and I can teach you how to do it too. All right. I remember um, there was this time when I was at Bill Bankston's home and he was training me how to he was showing, he was watching me work with, with my patient and showing me what the tumor feels like when it's doing this, that, and the other. And, um, and he said something like, aren't you this hotshot intuitive? Because I was, you know, I'd been an acupuncturist for what, 25 years back then. I, I'd, I was a shaman. I was senior faculty of the Acutonics Institute of Integrative Medicine. I was, I was all these things. And I just said, but Bill, I don't get your results. So you're, you're obviously doing something that I'm not, that I'm not doing with those methods. And that was when I just dropped another layer of I'm a big shot, or I already have this, you know, authentic spiritual connection and I know what I'm doing here. Like it was a beginner's mind that I think really helped me break through. And I invite you to do the same. All right, chapter one. Six things I tell people when they learn their pet has cancer. Number one, there is another way. In fact, there are lots of other ways. This book describes my way of working with cancer using a non-invasive energy medicine method. If your pet is young for their breed's normal lifespan and never had chemo or radiation therapy, they are the ideal candidates for trying my method. This book will give you enough information to know if you want to use this method to help your pet. So the chemo and radiation. Since then, I've learned how to drill into the chemo and radiation bit, and I can train almost anybody to at least enhance the quality of life of their pet. It might not, um, the healing might not be as robust, but it's like a bell curve of responders. Um, some people and animals respond just wow, they it just work so well. And some some don't respond at all and most are somewhere in between. And it seems that if you've had chemo and radiation, it tends to make you go that way a little bit, like towards the not responder side. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't do other things to make, make it happen too. Um, and making it happen doesn't mean you're cured. It just means you're, you live a lot longer. You live a lot more comfortably. Um, you, there's a sense of healing in the event. Sometimes, 
you know, life is life and, and cancer is an exit strategy, but, but healing can come psycho-spiritual, the meaning, the purpose, the, the whole thing can, um, can be a healing experience rather than just a traumatizing, stupid thing. Okay. So there is another way. Number two, you don't have to be gifted to help your pet. Um, you're off the hook. Your animal friend will get healing from source, not from you. So you don't have to be anything, have to be enlightened or extraordinarily gifted with special healing powers or abilities. This book will give you the confidence to touch your pet with, let read this, the, while practicing a visualization exercise in your head. You will learn what to look for in a naturally healing tumor. You'll learn to avoid common mistakes. You, of course, will want your veterinarian on the team to share their clinical experience so your pet really gets great, well-rounded care. All right? Because um, that's a big thing. Like, okay, Suzanne, you've had all this training as an acupuncturist and you do it for a living. Of course, you're going to be better at this than me. And I would say not necessarily. There's something about the love that somebody has for a loved one that is defies experience. And there's something that beginners have that non-beginners don't have which is a fresh approach you don't think that you know you can actually be more neutral than I can I think sometimes people can some, I train people how to be neutral but, um, but it's not that hard to train them so you can do this okay good number three my method has a foundation in, of solid scientific research I started my cancer healing adventures with William Bankston, and just cancer healing means, you know, healing of, bringing healing forces to something. It doesn't mean zap, you're all better. It doesn't mean that at all. Okay, it means, you know, in the context of promoting health. That's what healing to me means. Okay, I started my cancer healing adventures with William Bankston, PhD. Bankston did 15 different controlled university laboratory studies he documented again and again cancer cures in mice. He found that not only did the mice's cancer completely go away, they were also immune to the recurrence of cancer. He trained skeptical graduate students to do his method, and they got similar results. Their mice's cancer was also cured. He personally mentored me how to work successfully with my human cancer patients. All right. Um, since then, Bankston's done a lot more research, and you can see his research. I think it's www, whatever that is, https, bankstonresearch.com. Okay. Number four, my method for pets is an extension of my work with people. Bill Bankston generously taught me his image cycling technique and how to manage naturally healing tumors. So he taught me his image cycling technique in like an afternoon, but then it took many, many, many hours of me, of him watching me work and he, him saying, okay, do it this way, do it that way. Like, okay, that's important right there. Like really, really getting down to the micro, micro parts. And since I was an acupuncturist, I was very familiar with bodies. I was able to observe pretty precisely uh, a lot of details that might have gone over the head of a lot of other people. And it was, I'm, I'm forever grateful for that because um, I wouldn't have had the confidence to do what I do otherwise. Because um, it's sort of real to me that cancer can be very lethal and I don't want to give false hope and I don't want to lead people on. I guess that's the same as false hope. Um, it just felt like a very big deal. Now I'm more used to it, but back then I was very nervous. All right, he gave me the confidence to work with cancer. My 35 years clinical experience with Western, Chinese, and anthroposophic medicine have helped me understand how cancer healing works and give me ideas of what to change if something is stuck. I've had many teachers who taught me how to work with my clairvoyance. These all led me to be able to access my true teacher, which is the substance of the universe and the true nature of my patients. Okay, so I'm, you know, I had four years of graduate school in neurophysiology. I'm a registered dietitian, nutritionist, I've worked in hospitals. I've been and remain to be a health professional um, my whole career. And there's just oh, Chinese medicine, herbalism, 
shamanism, acutonics, it's probably, and lots of little one, like, oh my God, hundreds of little one or three day workshops where I learn little methods and little forms and, and exciting things that are, I bring to my patients that, you know, we, we do that at the time. Always learning, always learning. So um, in the context of that foundation, I had a lot of hooks to learn um, what might be important, what might not be important, things to observe. Um, what I do is observation-based, and you don't need to have all that clinical experience, but when I'm working with you, I can help you say, that thing that just happened, that's important. And I don't know ahead of time what that might be, but you know, when it happens, I can, I can help you notice that it's important and then help you get the confidence you need that you're actually doing something. Because otherwise, it's a little strange to, do, to put a lot of energy into this if you don't have any feedback. Okay, like how do you even know you're having traction or not? Because one of the tenets is that you're not supposed to believe in it, you're supposed to just observe it. So what do you pay attention to? I think that's what I'm really good at. Okay, when you learn this method, you will not need all this. I guess I already, I'm jumping ahead of myself. All my training and experience has prepared me to help you and be your teacher. Beginners have tremendous luck with this, possibly because their ego is out of the way. The actual technique is quite accessible to a lay person. You don't need to believe in it or even be good at it. All you need is an open heart and some clear thinking and the willingness to do it. And seriously, I think that's a lot of what I do. Is people feel like, oh, I need to work with Suzanne. And I just help them find their own connection to what is just right under the surface of what they're already doing. You know, so or what they, they would be doing without that encouragement. It's kind of like a crystal. You know, if you look at a crystal a certain way, it's, it's opaque. If you turn it suddenly, it's like you can see what's beyond it. It's, I feel like I can help people do that with their own techniques, just from having been around the, in the industry for so much. So it's not a matter of doing the technique like for 20 hours and hoping for the best. No, we, we get some traction right off the bat, or we don't, we don't just waste time. Okay, number five, be prepared for your own inner transformation as you help your pet heal. Okay, so before I read on, this book is about pets, but it's about people too. Everything here works for people. Um, pets seem to not need to be involved. And I'll tell you a story that's not in this book that happened after this book was written. Is, um, you know, I thought, why did, you know, there's this rapid image cycling technique that Bankston teaches, and um, and the pets didn't learn that. So why why is it important? Um, and then I had a, a client who was in her late 80s, and she had Alzheimer's, and she had a tumor, you know, the, about the size of a grapefruit on her head. It was just a it was a skin tumor, but it was huge. And her son did most of the treatments, and she couldn't memorize. She couldn't do the technique. She her Alzheimer's was pretty intensely, um, you know, progressed. And he was able to treat her maybe three times a day, like short, like a short one and like a couple short treatments and maybe one or two long treatments. He was extremely um, interested in, in doing this because after a few weeks, he started getting some traction and then he got very excited. But um, Anyway, he was able to take their tumor without chemo radiation, and it was like the size of like a quarter, like a little little sore on her her cheek. And then she died of, of a heart attack um, without any chemo radiation. But what I learned from that is that she, in some ways her consciousness wasn't in the way. The same way I think animals' consciousness doesn't get in the way. And I think that it's really hard for a normal person to just receive a treatment. It's like actually a hard thing to do. So you have to be involved in some way because to pretend like you're not involved is kind of like a lie. It's really hard to be neutral. So don't be neutral, be curious and interested if you've still got your wits about you. Um, so that little piece, I do a lot of training on how to be neutral, how to have the right amount of interest and the right amount of detachment about the process and how to tell if you're doing it right. And that whole human piece is not what's in this book. What's in this book um, 
also applies to all the people. Um, but it's um, it just that extra piece is not in this book. All right, so be prepared for your own inner transformation. So this happens with people, with treating people too. Be prepared to receive a deeply loving par paradigm shift that will not only help your beloved animal, but you as well, which is why I like this. This is so great. Everybody gets to a whiff of the healing. The first time I cured cancer, or I should say I witnessed, I participated in, I catalyzed. Anyway, I was so happy, but it also rocked my inner world. It had been so easy. I just followed a protocol. My patient was pretty sure he was wasting his time, but he was doing it because his wife wanted him to. And I was hopeful, but rather anxious and insecure. If it was so easy to cure cancer, what about all the other things that seemed impossible? I was happy my patient was better and I was disoriented. I had been doing energy medicine as an acupuncturist, sound healing, hound, sound healer, and shaman for 30 years and had never experienced anything like it. All right, and I'd experienced some pretty dramatic healings. It led me to consider my life differently. It also led me to offer my experience to you in the form of this book. All right. Okay. Anything to say? I think that pretty well says that. I've watched similar experiences in my students who learn to help their animals. You may not have a mini identity crisis like I did, but I can just about promise you that some part of your psyche will be freed up. Being in the presence of a tumor healing itself almost always touches one in a profound way. Which is why I say I bring healing to the experience, even if you don't live that there's something that happens when the tumor cools down that that helps you, it just guides you to that place in yourself that that's profound and beautiful and wonderful and powerful. It's a big deal. It's not that you necessarily have great insights into the nature of life. You don't start levitating, thank goodness. It's more that when your pet gets better, it tends to lift the whole system they live in. And that happens after every session, and of course when you get the clean, you know, CT scan or whatever. Sometimes I wonder who is getting the more profound healing, the dog with cancer or the dog's owner. And that goes for people too. Number six, yes, this method is experimental and you have support. The last thing I want to do is give you false hope. There are no guarantees in life and especially not in the cancer world, but no guarantee does not mean no support. If you are learning my method, I want, I want to know how you are doing. I did not write this book because I had healed thousands of cats and dogs. I am not the John of God for horses. That was before John of God was outed. Okay, I am just a few steps ahead of you. I have a researcher's mind, and I want to discover what works and how to teach it. As you work with your animal, you will discover things that I didn't know about the method. You will have questions for which others will have answers. If it doesn't work, I want to know about that too. I invite you to be part of a forum and support network of others trying this method. Let's take this process, practice it, and see if it can help you and your animal friend. And what I didn't put in here, and I, you know, this is an older book, but right now, 20, December 2023, I have a, a Facebook group where you can read this book or listen to these, this video and say, what about this? What about that? And um, I answer it there. And I can also answer questions on YouTube, but every Friday we do a live uh, distance healing and you can join there. You can put in your pet's name or your person's name and I do a little teaching and it's a amazing group of people. A lot of healers there, a lot of resonance with um, uh, the Bankston method and with my way of doing it and my own method. Okay, good. All right, so that was chapter one. I'll see you on the next video for chapter two.